Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, our latest A Day in the Life program. We're thankful that you're joining us on this uh, sunny Sunday morning. Um, we have a really great program today. Uh, we're very excited about um, and before we start, I wanted to just uh, go through a, a couple of things, um, although I'm sure everyone is uh, now a Zoom expert, having been quarantined for so long. Uh, if you have a question at any point for our guests, please use the Q&A feature, which is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can find that. You can post a question at any time. There will be a Q&A um, portion of the program. Um, Bedford Playhouse. Um, we really appreciate your joining us for what we're calling Virtual Playhouse. Um, as some of you may know, uh, the governor has given approval for movie theaters to reopen as of this past Friday, uh, and we hope to be reopening very soon once we are confident that all of our safety protocols and other procedures are uh, in place. Um, we're almost there, so look for that announcement uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, perhaps by the beginning of May, as fingers crossed. Uh, and we also wanted to invite you to visit our website, which is bedfordplayhouse.org. Um, we have a lot of really great programs uh, coming up. Uh, this is Women's History Month. Um, so in addition to the uh, three talented ladies you're gonna hear from in a minute, uh, we have a, a number of programs celebrating Women's History Month. Uh, uh, we have um, uh, a talk on the uh, Gloria Steinem in her own words coming up with a with an all star panel. Uh, we have a talk with um, the director of the recent PBS documentary about Laura Ingalls Wilder. Uh, and we're going to be doing uh, a special uh, classic Tuesdays at the end of this month with the lion in winter uh, with Catherine Hepburn as Eleanor of Aquitaine. Uh, so that being said, uh, I, the last little bit of business for us is if you are so inclined. If you enjoy this program, if you'd like to see more like it, um, please consider making a donation. You can do that on our website, bedforplayhouse.org. Um, any amount is appreciated. It helps us keep going while our doors are shut. Um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel um, as the vaccines are making their way through the population. Uh, but this is still sort of a precarious time for us because um, our doors remain closed. Uh, so anything uh, is, is appreciated. And I, lastly, I just want to do a pitch for our memberships. Uh, if you are not already, uh, please consider becoming a member. You get tickets, uh, ticket discounts, uh, invitations to special events, priority seating, uh, discounts on the cafe and bar, including takeout. Um, we have uh, uh, an Irish pub uh, specials coming up for St. Patrick's Day um, and a lot of really great stuff. So membership has its benefits and you might want to consider that. So without any further ado, uh, thank you again. And now I'm going to like to turn the floor over to our, our guests. Please welcome uh, Rebecca Eisenberg, Mindy Weinbrenner, and Yuki Asada, Asada sorry, to the, uh, to the program. Ladies. Thank you, Dad. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hello, right. everybody. Yeah. Rebecca, the floor is yours. Okay, great. So I think actually, Mindy, do you wanna get started? But I think what we should do before um we even if we could just go around and just talk about um kind of our backgrounds and then mindy will get started with the first book um i'm going to get started with the second book and then yuki is going to go into the illustrations and the process of from beginning to end um so i'll just start off um, my name's uh, rebecca eisenberg most people call me becca um i live here right down the street from Bedford Playhouse, which is great. <laughs> um, and I am a speech language pathologist. I've been a speech pathologist for 20 plus years. Um, and I'm also a children's book author. And I also have, um, I'm a book blogger and I also have a podcast. <laughs> I do a lot of different things. Um, but one of the things that I'm like so excited to be here today, to be here with Mindy and Yuki, we're such a great team. And um, we're just really excited to read the books and to talk about the process because it's been about 10 years, um, almost 10 years that we've been working together and such a great collaboration. So um, it's so exciting to, to be here. So thank you. <clears throat> okay, thanks Becca. I'm Mindy Weinbrenner. Um, I'm a special educator. 
I've been a special educator for about 16 years. Um, I started in the classroom as a pre-K teacher. And now for the last uh, about 11 years, I've worked in infants and toddlers, early intervention, going into homes, working with children um, zero to four um, who have developmental disabilities and their families. Um, and I am also a children's author. Um, and I live in Maryland, Ellicott City, Maryland. I have two young boys and two adorable chihuahuas. Um, and I'm happy to be here today. Thanks, Mindy and Becca. Uh, my name is Yuki. I, uh, I used to live in New York City, but I moved to sunny Florida about seven years ago, I think. Uh, I, use, I have a background in design and I worked in home furnishing, textile designs and apparel graphics, textile design. And I am currently working for a design company here in Tampa doing mural designs art installations and graphic design, like branding and stuff like that. And Monkey Balloon was, it was the first children's book that got published and I illustrated. So it's been a great journey together, all three of us. So, all right, let's get going. Okay, um, before I read the Monkey Balloon, I just wanted to give a brief description of how it got started. Um, Becca is my sister's best friend from college, and um, she and I have a, always shared a passion of children, obviously, um, but my sister was talking to Becca, and she knew that I always wanted to write a children's book, so she kind of put us in touch with each other, and I just remember one night, probably in about 2010, I had a little baby, she had a toddler, and we would talk at night, and we would just come up with ideas about this book. And Becca had an idea um, about a balloon floating away because her daughter, Gracie, um, had lost the balloon and she wondered where it went. So that's kind of where it started. And then we both have a love of monkeys. So we decided to make the monkey balloon. Um, and then after we got the book going, um, talking back and forth for months and months, we knew we needed illustrations. So um, I. I thought, you know, my best friend from college had a sister, Yuki, who is an amazing artist. So I said, let's call Yuki and see if she'd be up for it. And we called her and she she was on board. And that's kind of how it all started with the three of us. Um, and then we went into the process of trying to get the book published and um, then doing self-publishing. And it kind of took off from there. But um, that was just a brief brief background, um, but I really want to get the book um, shown to you so that you can kind of see what it's all about. So hopefully you can see, this is the monkey balloon. There we go. You can see the beautiful illustrations. All right. So our characters in the book are Poppy. Sorry, it's all backwards for me. Poppy and Mimi. There we go. All right. Balloon, says Mimi. Which one would you like, asked Poppy. I want the monkey balloon. Let's take the monkey balloon for a walk, says Poppy. Uh-oh, my monkey balloon. Where do you think the monkey balloon went, asked Poppy. Hmm, maybe the monkey balloon is eating ice cream at the ice cream shop, says Mimi. <clears throat> no, there are only people eating ice cream at the ice cream shop. Hmm, maybe the monkey balloon is going down the slide, says Mimi. No, sorry. There's only a little girl going down the slide, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is riding the school bus, says Mimi. Okay. 
No, there are only children riding on the school bus, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is swimming with fish in the ocean, says Mimi. No, there are only fish swimming in the ocean, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is at the zoo, says Mimi. Oh, look, Poppy. There it is. There's the monkey balloon, says Mimi. It looks like he found his friend, says Poppy. Mimi reaches up and Poppy gets the balloon for her. So happy. And that's the end. Poppy and Mimi walk home with the monkey balloon. And that's the end. And the special thing about our book is Becca and I came together and we decided we wanted to put language and learning tips at the end of our book. So we used our background in speech pathology and special education and um, what we know about literacy. And we came up with um, about 10 tips um, that really help educators and parents learn how to read the book with their child. And these tips can be used for the monkey balloon or they can be used for any, any book really. Um, but it really breaks it down into different um, areas of language and learning, language development and literacy development for children. So um, that was the first book. And what happened after we um, published this first book is, um, it, you know, it was our first time doing it. So um, we really didn't know how to market it. Um, so what I did, um, and Becca too, and um, Yuki did some events too, we just we, I mean, I called any children's um, venue that I could think of, children's bookstores, children's play places, um, trampoline places, anywhere that I thought children would be. And I asked if they would mind if, a, if I came and read the book. And that's kind of how we got started doing book readings. Um, and when we did them, the children loved the book, but there were always two things that they said. They wanted to see what happened next with the monkey balloon. And they also wanted, um, the parents really wanted a hardback book. So those two things kind of got us moving in the next, our next step. Um, we wanted to make another book and we had a lot of ideas. And then we wanted to um, see if we could make a book that was hardback. So that's kind of how um, we got started with our next step, which was we created a Kickstarter campaign in order to fund the second book. And we went with a different self-publishing -publish company called Mascot Books, who does hardback books. Um, so I don't, I don't know if now is a good time to share our. Um, we did a Kickstarter campaign, and we made a video, which is kind of neat to see. Um, and we have a, we have it to share with you. Okay, so we make sure. Okay. Okay. So this was our Kickstarter page. Um, so after we did the first book, we decided for the second book that we were going to do a Kickstarter campaign. And um, I don't know if anyone that's done the Kickstarter, it does take a lot of planning. And the fact that it was me, Mindy, and Yuki doing it together made it really, really great because um, we just collaborated together on you know, how we're going to set up the campaign. Um, one of the big things too about a Kickstarter is, you know, getting the illustrations up, making sure that, you know, people know what the book is about. Um, and also just setting up like what people are going to, for anyone who doesn't know what Kickstarter is, it's a crowdfunding website. And so people, you put up a certain amount that you want to, that you need to raise in order to publish the book or any product. There's lots of things on Kickstarter. Um, so we came up with, well, what if people donated a certain amount, what, what were they going to get in exchange? Um, but one fun fact that I want to 
um, just say that is still so crazy is that the three of us have actually never been together physically in the same place at one time. So <laughs> we've been together separately, like me and Mindy have been together. Me and Yuki have been together. Mindy, I mean, Mindy and Yuki have been together, but the three of us haven't. So anyway, it's, it, it could really, we collaborated so well in so many, on so many different platforms yeah. way before Zoom we would just have phone conversations. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna show you the video that um, that Yuki made and it's Mindy's voice in the background. So I'm gonna, this. Oh, let me just share my computer sound. That's one thing I have learned before. In 2014, our biggest dream came true. We published our first book, the Monkey Balloon. Many of our readers asked us to write another book. So, in our second book, A Tale of the Monkey Balloon, we take you on a unique journey through magical fairy tales. The magnificent illustrations by artist Yuki Osada capture the reader's imagination. The educational tips provided allow teachers and parents to advance literacy and language skills. Help us make our young readers smile by donating towards publishing A Tale of the Monkey Balloon. Um, so I think, um, so what I'm going to do next is now that we've talked about the Kickstarter a little bit, actually, and the Kickstarter, the great thing about Kickstarter is that it's like always up. You go back to our Kickstarter page, it's still there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read A Tale of the Monkey Balloon, which um, it took us a while to get the name because we went back and forth about a lot of different things. Um, so just to kind of give a little bit of a background, we actually wrote the book and actually had it illustrated before we even really going into the Kickstarter. And um, then once we got the Kickstarter, then we were able to enter into publishing. We, we made a couple of tweaks and actually Yuki will explain that um, a little bit later about the illustrations. Um, and so just to also let you know, as far as like anyone that's like interested in how long it might take to write a children's book, some people think that writing a picture book doesn't take that long because it's like, oh, well, it's not that many words and it shouldn't take that long. It actually took us, I mean, it takes years to write a picture book. I mean, I've done picture books and less than that, but I mean, in most of it, it's a pretty complicated process because you really have to think about the words and the pictures and how everything flows. And also what the perspective is from a child listening to this book and reading this book. So as an adult, it's going to be different than as a child. So, um, you know, Mindy and I both had like the, we also had, you know, we had our kids, but also, you know, I do a lot of readings during, um, during therapy. So we learned a lot as well as like how, what kids questions that came up and um, just to what, just to reiterate what uh, Mindy had said about, you know, with their second book, we wanted to continue embedding those, um, those language tips literacy and language into the book um and then also it's about how we read the book as well so just to kind of as, as a tip is when you're reading the book we read it a little bit more slowly and we may you know ask some questions encourage commenting um and then also i always tell parents to encourage rereading the book repeated readings are great just because we read it once doesn't mean we can't read it um you know, a lot more times, because there's a lot of things that come about when you read it again that you might not have noticed from the first time. Um, so just a little bit of a background about how we thought of the second, the second book. So we all, you know, me, Mindy, and Yuki love fairy tales. And so it was one of those things that I think all the three of us, you know, we grew up with, and we wanted to bring back into this book. And we thought, how amazing would it be for the monkey balloon to go through the different fairy tales? Like, 
those classic fairy tales, like the three little bears and um, so, and Goldilocks. So we were really excited to, um, to write this book and to see it come to life. Um, so, okay, so I'll just get started. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put, take my monkey over here. <laughs> okay, so earlier that day, so what we did was uh, for anyone who was reading, who, who read the first book and had the first book, um, we wanted to just, you know, kind of like recall a little bit, and this is good for recalling information for kids, like what happened in the first book, okay? So, you know, they got the balloon, the monkey balloon, it flew away, and then Mimi got it back. Okay, so this is like, and it also is a standalone book as well. So we don't want feel, people to feel like they had to get the first book to, to read the second book. So you could, they, they're standalone books, they are a series, but um, we don't want feel people to like not understand the second one if they hadn't read the first one. Okay, it's been a long day. Let's take the monkey balloon home, says Poppy. Mimi, would you like to hear a good night story? Yes, Poppy. Yes. How about my favorite book of fairy tales? Yes, Mimi. Good choice, Mimi. I'll be right up, says Poppy. Okay. Once upon a time. Good night, Mimi, says Poppy. Uh oh, my monkey balloon says Mimi. Where do you think it went? Asked Poppy. Maybe the monkey balloon is eating porridge in the three bears' house, says Mimi. So just to let you know, it was the repetitive lines we also repeated throughout both books. So we wanted to kind of keep it the same theme. So over here, she's crying because she doesn't know where the monkey balloon went. And there he is, so cute. <laughs> no, only the little girl with yellow curls is eating porridge at the three bears' house, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is hiding from the big bad wolf in the brick house, says Mimi. No, only the three little pigs are hiding from the big bad wolf in the brick house, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is baking in the oven with the gingerbread cookies, says Mimi. No, only the gingerbread cookies are baking in the oven. Run, run as fast as you can, says Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is climbing up the beanstalk, says Mimi. No, only the little boy is climbing up the beanstalk, said Mimi. Maybe the monkey balloon is walking in the forest to visit grandma, says Mimi. No, only the little girl with the red hood is walking in the forest to visit grandma, says Mimi. My monkey balloon is missing. Have any of you seen it, asked Mimi? Well, there it is. There's my monkey balloon. Home at last, says Mimi. And she gives monkey balloon a big kiss. <laughs> and then she's in bed, and um, she has she has all the characters in the back here. So Mindy and Yuki and I really thought about just adding the little features throughout the book. And that's why I talk about repeated readings are really great because maybe the first time you might not notice that, um, that you know, Mimi has the golden egg as she's traveling to the next scene. Um, so all the scenes, she has a little object from the previous scene. And why that's so great is that that's a great way for parents um, or teachers to be able to say, hey, um, you know, oh, she has the golden egg. Why does she have the golden egg? The golden egg is from that and then be able to recall that information from the last scene. Um, and then in the end, just talking about, you know, all the different characters and who was, 
who is in this story and kind of what also what happened? Like, was it a dream or did it really happen? Um, and so Mindy and I also did these evidence-based tips in the back as well um, for parents, teachers, therapists. Um, and then we just have our, um, and actually one of the things that I love that Yuki did over here was that we made a map and we just talked about where we were. So, you know, I'm up here in New York and Mindy's in Maryland and Yuki's down in Florida. So um, that was like a little tip that we had there. Uh, I also wanna talk about um, what kind of goes along with the book. So all the different things that we have available that are, that are, that are free and available on our website. Um, so I'm just gonna, in the background here, I have sequencing cards. Um, that this is, I'll, I'll show you in a minute on the website that it's all available for free. You could just print it. And I use the sequencing cards all the time when I'm like reading the book um, in person and also virtually. I'll just show them the different sequences. When I'm in person, the kids will put in order the sequencing of the, the cards and then they'll, they'll just retell me the story. So it's a nice visual tool when you're, um, when you're, when you're reading to your kids. Um, and one of the other favorite things that I got made that Mindy and I also have for our readings are these felt pieces that we got made as we're reading the story. Um, and so I also, we put these on the felt board as well. And we'll, that's part of the things that we do in person. Um, so I'm just gonna go through for a couple minutes, um, just talking about our website and what's available uh, on there. And then we will, um, I'm gonna hand, hand it over to Yuki. So I'm just going to um, go over, over here. This is our website over here, themonkeybone.com. And this is a link to our Kickstarter, but over here under resources, we have a lot of great resources on here that it's all free and it's all available um, to be printed. So um, we have our articles, that's just some short articles about reading um, and one of them, which Yuki is talking, is going to talk about is that the silhouettes, but we have vocabulary lists. We have um, how it really, how it aligns with core curriculum for um, for kindergarten. I believe it's first grade we have out there as well. And the sequencing cards are up here. So right here, you can go ahead and you could just um, print them right here, download the cards right there. Um, this is our, our teacher lesson plan for my friend Jessica, who is um, works for the Department of Ed. And so here's a unit plan over here on the Common Core Worksheet. I also have, I work with um, children and adults with complex communication needs, use communication systems. So I also talked about here about adapting the book um, and also making communication, a communication board with it. So that's also on there about how I did that. Um, writing activities, the three of us worked on together. So we have a question worksheet, a writing and drawing activity. Um, and then over here is that common core worksheet um, and arts and crafts activities. We could keep you busy all day with monkey balloon. <laughs> um, so we have crafts on here, writing and drawing, a coloring game with some words. This is a nice literacy activity for young kids. We have coloring pages. And then if you haven't had enough language and learning tips, here are more on the bottom over here. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over to Yuki because um, I could talk forever. Stop. <laughs> I know everyone wants to see the illustration process. So. so I had the opportunity to illustrate both books and it was such a great challenge. And it was very exciting to put images to the story that was written and how, what was the best way to storytell through illustrations. So what I want to show you is Becca is going to share a screen uh, is a PDF that I put together. It shows different stages of the process. And if you could scroll to first page. Da, da, da. So at the beginning, in the beginning uh, of the book, the first book, uh, Mindy and Becca had this 
story written out and we were ready to start putting illustration sketches. And even though these are in color, these are actually rough sketches that sort of, we wanted to make sure like story had a sequencing flow and it told a narrative and it made, it sort of solidify the visual look. And we wanted to make sure the colors were vibrant. And we talked about the characters being in the silhouette because we wanted any of the readers to be able to reflect, um, like relate to the characters. So even though the characters have names, you know, Mimi and Poppy, it could be anybody. And, and so at the, on the first page, we started to develop the look and a layout. And I wanted to have sort of like the coloring book and cutout look that textures of the colors and different like shades of colors would come out. And I, it also brought focus to the monkey balloon, which, you could see, you can obviously spot throughout the vibrant pages, but because of the simple background colors and elements, you could notice like you could, you sort of pick up on each of what the gestures of the characters are doing. And so uh, if you go to the second page of the PDF, we start developing the idea of like, oh, Mimi asks a question, like is a monkey balloon is, is, it, is it doing something with a thought balloon? And then the following page will have a spread of a vibrant illustration that shows like, oh no, only um, like fish are in the ocean sort of a thing. And towards the end of the first round of sketches, it starts to get really rough. But what, what it, the important thing of this exercise is that it tells the visual story what the lines are going to be and also another thing to consider when we were do we knew we wanted to have the actual physical book so we wanted to make sure things were not going to fall into the gutter which is like where the page opens so even though on this sketch I have some of the characters that are main important thing falling to the center of the page so I had to make sure when I was illustrating it it wasn't going to fall into the space and another thing you have to kind of consider is the number of pages that are in a book and any picture books, it has to be even pages, even number of pages. So that's why um, we had to keep it, except for the last, last page, it will become a half page. And so this illustration show, this is the, the this is a sketch. And then at the bottom of this image is the final version that got into the book. So you see the similarities, but you notice things have shifted and also nothing falls into the center of the page. And it also shows like the foreground and the background. And what's more important, your eyes look into the whole layout and be like, oh, okay. This develops the hierarchy of the visual. And on the next slide, this is another one where the sketch shows a bit more of like a rough illustration, but it sort of puts where like the colors coming together and playing off each other. And this sets up a scene. And what we wanted to do was we wanted each illustration to have more conversations like kids could ask, teachers could ask the students, like how many people are fishing or what, how many boats, what kind of colors do you see? How many fish are out there? How, what kind of colors are on the illustration? And I think we were very conscious of trying to make those visual, like Easter eggs almost like, oh, this is what's happening throughout each of the page. And let's see. Oh, this one too. I think in the initial, um, in the early stages of our brainstorming, I think I visually had this idea of, oh, I wanted this vibrant colors of New York City, maybe like a street, busy street scene. But then in the end, we decided to make it to a school bus with kids playing in the background. So it's a lot more um, 
in a way it's kids friendly. And let's see. So when we started to talk about the second book, we knew we were going to be self-publishing again, but I think with mascot books, we were allowed to have more pages, even though it's supposed to be even numbers, we were given a lot more page options. I think it might've changed, but I think even for this book, we wanted to make sure the visual narrative kind of continued on with the questions being asked and a full spread. And I think what was challenging about this book was the moment where Mimi starts to fall asleep to um, when the dream starts to happen, we wanted to make sure that, um, you know, people, the readers were sort of, they got the visual. Oh, sorry, Becca. Um, oh, it's okay. You can. Um, you, want to show, <laughs> you want me to show that part? I have. No, yeah, you can show that, that part. part. It's coming up. Yeah. yeah it's coming up. So, okay. So initially, um, if you scroll back up a little bit on the same page, we, the sketch is that Mimi falls asleep with a bubble and a monkey bone flying into the forest. And the first round of sketch I did at the bottom is that Mimi's falling asleep, but it, the scenery didn't look like it was a nighttime, even though it was supposed to be. And it sort of we were afraid I was gonna give a little confusing message. So what we ended up doing was we separated so that you see that Mimi's falling asleep and the scenery's dark and then she's starting to dream. And then the story develops into, um, even though you know it's a nighttime, she's falling asleep, but story develops into a daytime because it's a dream in a fairy tale. And uh, Becca, if you could go back to more of the rough sketches for this for second book. It's, yeah, scroll, scroll up one more. Yeah. So, and same thing happens um, with this is that we want to, and we also had fun time picking which fairy tales that we were going to pick from. And I think um, I think we we could have done way more, many more pages of children's book, you know, with fairy tales like oh, is it, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs or something? But we decided to pick the ones we chose, and um, and you could see on the sketch that uh, Mimi's holding the golden egg from the previous page, and I think on the previous pages, I think Poppy's wearing. Um, a straw hat from the yeah. three pigs. And I think the gingerbread cookie is like walking with them while they're walking to the next page. So we have a lot of fun putting those images together. And I think throughout the whole book, we really didn't put too much expressions on the characters' faces, except for, uh, I think they were like at the end of the first book where Mimi's hugging a monkey balloon. And also for this book, when Mimi wakes up and also sees the monkey balloon. I think those are the only times we really showed expressions in the eyes. Otherwise we wanted to show just a silhouette so kids could sort of see more of a gestural drawing. And let's see, uh, if you could scroll down to the next page, next page. So this was like the rough sketch and then what I, I do a lot of the drawings, I do all the drawings on a computer, but what I do is I create them. Uh, first, I do the rough to figure out what where things are gonna fall layout wise. And we knew where we wanted the text to fall and everything. So it didn't interrupt, it was easy to read and didn't interrupt the illustration. And so I use Adobe programs to illustrate. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a, flat, clean illustration. And what I do is I bring it into Photoshop and the next image and add a little bit of um, textures, softening of the images so that there's a little more life added into the layers. And I think this is the part where any of like three of us when we're working, 
we see it happen and we're like, oh, wow, it comes alive. And we really enjoy seeing this transformation from a, you know, stick figure sketch stage to this. And if you scroll to the next page, I think there's another example. Oh, this is where the sequencing and a lot of things we had to talk it through to make sure it made sense and the pages fit right. And we're happy with the outcome. And I think, oh, this is it. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I just I just also want to say too, like everyone being on the same page, like we just got very lucky that the three of us see things in a very similar way. Like Mindy and I both together, we kind of visualize things. And then Yuki, it's like she has like ESP, like she just knows. <laughs> Well, that is, I mean, we, we talk about it, but she just, she just brings it to life and we have this really nice collaboration. I think that, you know, to write and to illustrate with somebody, you need that collaboration together because what could be in somebody else's mind may not be what is in the illustrator's mind, but we just have this like kind of really nice um, collaboration together where we all visually kind of see the same thing. So Becca. We have a question. Do you want me to read it? Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Lori asked, um, she said, this is great. Thanks. Three questions. One, where do you get most of your sales? Two, what offer, offer was the most successful on Kickstarter? And three, are you in bookstores and libraries? So, um, do you want me to answer the question? Yeah, first? yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, where we get our most most of our sales? Um, I I mean we're available on Amazon um, as well as um, Barnes and Nobles, and um, you can find our links uh, on themonkeybloom.com. But I think also we're gonna link some of this up for you guys. Um, so we do get sales through that, um, but we also have gotten creative with how we get some of our sales. I mean we've done a lot of the book readings. Um, where we do book signings. Um, and then um, over the past couple years, um, Beck and I both have gone into schools and done like pre-order forms, which I think was really successful um, where the families at the schools would pre-order um, a book and then we would um, be able to personalize it and sign it for each child when we go in and do the reading. Um, so we found like different ways to, to bring attention to our book um, and get sales through that. Uh, what's the next question? Um, and that's like off? a longer link, but I just put a link in for the app for Amazon. Um, it's also available on Mascot also as well, but, um, but yeah, and yeah, that's where we're, I would say we're getting most of our sales is, is online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what offer was the most successful on Kickstarter? Um, if I had to guess, it was probably, um, I feel like we got the most um, when we did either uh, one or two, I think you got one or two books and bookmarks. It was probably within the 25 to $50 range we got the most. Um, and I think for Kickstarter, for us, the mascot book, what was different about mascot book was that it wasn't print on demand. So we had to pay for the amount of books we wanted printed and we had to also consider the shipping and storage fee for these books that got printed so i think in the end the amount we were trying to raise got a little higher than the actual book because we have to consider all those things in i think yeah and and just for anyone who kind of like the, the difference between print on demand versus um versus just actually like, well, not print on demand, the opposite where you're, um, print on demand means that, that they're only printing what you order. Um, so for a lot of bookstores, we also are in some bookstores as well. Um, you know, locally near me, I, we're in some bookstores. Um, but the one thing about our second book is that it is, there's, that's why we went with um this with mascot because um for the second book is that bookstores could return they could return our books because they can't return print on demand books 
Um, so there's a little bit of a difference. I mean, that's kind of like another discussion is the difference between the two. I think there's pros and cons to each. I, I think that like, it's kind of nice that we have both. Um, but for, yeah, but for the second one, it was a different kind of also expanded distribution. I just think that it was easier to kind of get out. Um, but on the other side, we, we also have to, you know, pay for the storage fee and all that other stuff. Um, but the Kickstarter, I think just as an added bonus, I feel like it was a great way to get our book out there. So for anyone who is interested in doing a Kickstarter, I mean, I think that it's a great way to just get your get your book out there, your product out there, and get people to know what you're working on. Hey guys, we actually have a question that was submitted by email uh, to one of our email addresses. So I'm just going to read it to you. You guys can can answer it. Um, this is kind of what we were just talking about. So the first part of the question is um, with regard to Kickstarter. Do you have a sense on how far your reach was? Like, were you getting people? who were mostly like your circle of friends and family, or were you really reaching people across the country who happen to be interested in this particular endeavor? And the second part of the question is, as self-publishers, how did you find the trade-off between assuming that as self-publishers, you don't have um, an editor looking over your shoulder from like a publishing house? Like how much of a difference did that make in your, in your process? Well, is it okay if I answer that? Um, so I think I think as far as the editing go, we definitely got editing from self-publishing. Um, you definitely need, actually one of the great things about the three of us working together is that we have three different, three, three pairs of eyes looking at a, at a manuscript. So I think that's the first thing, but I think anytime you publish, you definitely need an editor. You need people to read it um, because sometimes when you're looking at your work, you sometimes forget, like it, you could overlook a mistake for sure. I've done that before. Um, and so it's important for it to have the editor. We actually had an editor for, um, for when we did the first book, which is the print on demand. And then we also had an editor at NASCOT who also went through and edited the manuscript as well. Um, I'm sorry, Dan, what was the first question again? The first question was regarding your Kickstarter campaign, like where, how, how, um, what was the extent of the reach, I guess, for the people that donated? Like, were you getting people really from like across the country who happened to be interested in this particular project or was it mostly like friends and family and like your own circle of people? Well, I, I think from, I mean, and you guys add to Mindy and Yuki, I mean, I think for the three of us, because there was three of us, um, it was mostly, I would say within our, within like our circle, but I feel like it extended beyond because I know Mindy did a podcast and we got more people to also donate and it, it was kind of mostly our circles, I would say, right guys. But then it yeah. like extended a little bit beyond that as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, I want to just uh, re reiterate, um, this, this was great, guys. If there are any more questions, please post them in the Q&A um, forum. Uh, but I want to just remind everybody who's, who's uh, tuned in that there is a recording of this that we're going to post um, on the Bedford Playhouse YouTube channel. And everyone who has registered or, or signed in will get an email with the link in case they want to rewatch or share or um, you know, however they see fit to use it. They find it can be useful to them. Um, and we will also include um, some of the information that Rebecca was talking about. You guys can forward that and we'll include that in the email too, so that if there are any links, the Amazon link and a few others, um, some resources, uh, anything you guys wanna share with regard to that, we will also distribute that to everybody as well. So they'll, that, that'll be coming in the next couple of days. Um, so look out for that. Um, are there any more questions? I'm just checking the email one more time just to be sure. Uh, well, you have you have a comment, which is a congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jeannie. Congratulations, Thank the book you. is great. Thank you for sharing. Keep writing and illustrating. Amen to that. Um, do you guys have another project in the works? Is there something else? Is there another sequel coming, or uh, are we jumping too far ahead? We were I think about we've been talking about the three. <laughs> yeah, we're. 
We're definitely talking about it. I feel like we never, it, there's no real end to it. That's the great thing about, um, I think, writing and illustrating together. It's that it's just like this really fun project that kind of like makes you feel like a kid again, right? Because it's just fun and it's, I don't know, I love it. It gets me excited. Anything to do with books, I just get really excited, especially monkey bones. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we learn a lot from the two different processes of publishing on our own. Like, I think for the third book, we'll likely be doing self-publishing, not a hardcover. I don't know if we could, nowadays we could do hardcover on uh, print on demand. I don't know how that works, but I think we have learned a lot from, you know, both different methods. So it's something to consider for sure. Great. All right, ladies, thank you so much. And uh, again, we will, um, actually, I will turn my video on so I'm not a disembodied voice. Um, we will, again, <laughs> send that information around. But this was really fantastic. Thank you to the three well, of you for you. taking your time out of your Sunday mornings to, to join us and everybody who was watching. Um, and we are, we are, we'll be back with this series, uh, hopefully, in a couple of months. We do these quarterly. Um, so look for that. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do a follow-up with you guys on the next book. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. You too. Have a good Bye. one. Bye.